Okay. Let's see. The story. As it happened. As I remember it. As I'm telling it. Oh, God. Well, here goes. At exactly 6 o'clock tonight, I came home from work. My wife, Myra, was in her dressing room getting dressed for the party. I got a bottle of champagne from the refrigerator and headed upstairs. Rosita, the Spanish cook, was in the kitchen with Ramona, her Spanish sister, and Romero, her Spanish son. They were preparing an Italian dinner. They were waiting for Myra to tell her when to start the dinner. As I climbed to the stairs, I said to myself, It's my 10th wedding anniversary, and I can't believe I still love my wife so much. Myra is putting on the perfume I bought her for Christmas. I purposely buy it because it drives me crazy. I tapped on her door. Tap, tap, tap. She opens it. I hand her a glass of champagne. I make a toast. To the most beautiful wife a man had ever had for ten years. She says, To the best man in the best ten years a beautiful wife ever had. We drink. We kiss. We toast again. To the loveliest skin on the loveliest body that has never aged a day in ten wonderful years. She toasts. To the gentlest hands that ever stroked the loveliest skin that has never aged in ten wonderful years. We drink. We kiss. We toast. We drink. We kiss. We toast. By seven o'clock, the bottle is finished. My wife is sloshed, and I'm completely toasted. And then I smell the perfume. The perfume I could never resist. I loved her in that moment with as much passion and ardor as the night we were first newlyweds. I tell you this not with embarrassment, but with pride and joy for a love that grows stronger and more lasting as each new day passes. We lay there spent, naked in each other's arms, complete in our happiness. It's now eight o'clock, and outside it's grown dark. Suddenly, there's a gentle knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. The door opens, and a strange young man looks down at us with a knife in his hands. Myra screams. I jump up and run for the gun in my drawer. Myra grabs a towel and shields herself. I rush back in with a pistol, ready to save my wife's life. The strange young man says in Spanish, Yo quito se diablo enchilada porque se en quinto minuto. But I don't speak Spanish, and I never saw Rosita's son Romero before, and I didn't know the knife was to cut up the salad, and he was asking if they should heat up the dinner now. So I aimed my gun at him. Myra screams and pulls my arm. The gun goes off and shoots me in the earlobe. Rosita's son Romero runs downstairs and tells Rosita and Ramona, Mamaceta, me la que paso el hombre baco ayay, el hombre que loco que bang bang. The crazy man took a shot at him. So Rosita, Ramona, and Romero leave in a huff. My earlobe is bleeding all over Myra's new dress. Suddenly, we hear a car pull up. It's the first guests. Myra grabs a bathrobe and runs downstairs to stop Rosita, Ramona, and Romero. Otherwise, we'll have no dinner. But they drive off in their Alfa Romeo. I look out the window, but it's dark, and I think someone is stealing my beautiful old Mercedes, so I take another shot at them. Myra runs down to the basement where we keep the cedar chest. She's looking for the dress she wore last night for Bonds for Israel. She can't find the light, trips down the stairs, passes out in the dark. I run downstairs, looking for Myra, notice the basement door is open, and afraid the strange-looking kid is coming back, so I lock the door, not knowing that Myra is still down there. Then I run upstairs to take some aspirin because my earlobe is killing me from the hole in it. But the blood on my fingers gets to my eyes, and by mistake, I take four Valium instead. I hear the guests downstairs, and I want to tell them to look for Myra, but suddenly, I can't talk from the Valium, and I'm bleeding on the white rug, so I start to write a note explaining what happened, but the note looks like gibberish, and I'm afraid they'll think it was a suicide note, and they'll call the police, and my friend Glenn Cooper was coming. It would be very bad for his campaign to get mixed up with a suicide, so I tore up the note and flushed it down the toilet just as they walked into my room. They're yelling at me, what happened, what happened? And before I could tell them what happened, I passed out on the bed, and that's the whole goddamn story. Just sure as my name is Charlie Brock.